Hi, my best chemistry students. Welcome back. We are going to hop into the last segment of our discussion of gases and their properties and their behavior and move into Graham's Law. Now, this is definitely going to be new for you, I believe, for most of you. So let's take a look at this. What Graham's Law talks about and addresses are the is the movement of gases and the relative movement of gases so gases can move by either diffusion which is just the general movement through collisions in air so if i had perfume for example and i sprayed it at the front of the room over time you would smell the perfume all right and diffusion goes from high concentrations to low concentrations now, effusion, and I always think of it this way, the E means escape. So, effusion is an escape of gases through a pinhole. A little bit easier to model than diffusion. Now, Graham's Law states that the rates are inversely proportional to the molar mass. Well, I want you to think about this. I'm not going to do a total derivation, but I want to get close. Remember, kinetic energy is one half m v squared. All right. Now, if we have the same temperature, that means that the kinetic energy of our gases is the same. So I would have one half m one v one squared is equal to one half m2 v2 squared because as long as I was at the same temperature I have the same kinetic energy so if we did a little bit of rearranging and solve these velocity we're going to talk about velocity and rate being interchangeable because we're not really looking at vectors at this point so let's take a look then that's how we get end up with the square root of the masses here and I hope it makes sense to you is that as you increase the mass, you decrease the rate or the velocity. All right? Now notice that time is directly proportional because as you increase the, the rate, if you're driving faster, aren't you going to get there in less time? Right? So you decrease time. Okay? And so things with a big mass have a slow rate means they're slow, that means it's going to take them more time to get from one point to another. Now, I tend to kind of build the formula as I go, so let's take a look at this example. Let's put this in words, right? We have the velocity, we'll take these words and put them into symbols, the velocity or the rate of oxygen is equal to 2.23 times the rate of our reddish brown gas, our unknown gas. And it says determine the molar mass of the unknown gas. Well, I don't know about you, but I like my unknowns in my numerator. It makes my algebra a little bit easier. So my molar mass of my red, which is my unknown, would be on top. My molar mass of oxygen would be in the bottom. And we take the square root of that. So I'm just focusing in on this formula right now. Now rates are inversely proportional. So that puts the rate of oxygen on top and the rate of my unknown red gas in the denominator or velocity. I'm using those interchangeable. No, they're not identical, but hopefully you will forgive me for that. Now let's plug in then what we know. In place of the rate of oxygen, I'm going to put in our relationship there. So I have 2.23 times the rate of our unknown red gas over the rate of our unknown red gas is equal to our unknown molar mass, and the molar mass of oxygen is 32. Okay. Now, here's what we were able to do by plugging in those that relationship, that now cancels. So all I have to do is algebraically solve for x. And when I did that, and I'm sure you're going to tell me if I got it wrong, I get 159 grams per mole. Really, really big molecule to be a gas, but if we set up the pressure and temperature conditions right, it, it is possible. Right? 
Now, let's take a look at these two. We want to calculate the relative rate of effusion. There's two ways we can do that. We can set up a relative rate of NO2. That's what I'm going to start with, is N relative to N2O5. So that whole ratio is our unknown. Right? They're not asking us for either rate. And that's going to equal, since I have my rate of NO2 in the numerator, I'm going to put the molar mass of NO2 in the denominator and my rate of N2O5. Remember, they're inversely proportional. I get N2O5. So now I've built my formula. And if I plug those values in, I looked them up on Google. So again, I'm assuming they're right. 108.01. That's what happens when you're lazy and don't want to get up and go to the other room for a calculator. Over 46.01, and I get 1.53. So that means that my ratio is that NO2 is 1.53 times faster than N2O5, 1.53 to 1. All right? And that makes sense because this is a smaller molecule. The smaller the molecule, the faster the rate. Another way to write this would be to multiply. If I cross multiply, right? let me put that over here. Remember I have this as rate of NO2 over my rate of N2O5. If I simply cross multiplied here, I would get my rate of NO2 is equal to 1.53 times my rate of N2O5. So that would simply be another way to discuss those relative rates. Okay. So that's the use of Graham's Law mathematically. Remember, it's equally important to be able to describe that and explain that conceptually. All right. Plugging and chugging into mathematics will never be sufficient for AP Chemistry. All right, kiddos, that's the end of this little baby segment here. So until I see you in class, this is signing off.